What's going on guys? Yeah, I got another processor in for review. This one I'm actually looking forward to checking out, and it's probably one you've never heard of before. It's the Audio Control Maestro M5. My first time hearing about Audio Control was for Car Audio. I actually had a couple of their equalizers back in my high school days, and then I found out that they made some high-end home theater THX equalizers. Back then I was just a kid, so I had no spare change for any of that stuff. Fast forward to now, and I'm independently wealthy. <laughs> I wish I was. Anyways, I was able to get my hands on one of these guys, so I'm pretty excited. So let's go on, get this unboxed, and we'll go over a few tech specs. But before we get into it, if you're new to the channel and love audio and video gear and new movies, then hit the subscribe button for new weekly videos. Alright, let's do this. Inside, you get the owner's manual, the power cord, the remote control and batteries, a calibration mic for direct live room correction along with a USB cable, and last but not least, the antenna. So this is Audio Control's second highest end processor and their more affordable one. It retails for $5,900 and it's only available through the custom install market. It's Dolby Vision capable, supports Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, and IMAX enhanced audio formats. It measures your standard 17 inches wide by 16 and a half inches deep by seven inches high, and it weighs 23.9 pounds. Taking a look up front, we have buttons for menu, input selection, a select button, and an info button. There's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack next to a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input. For six grand, I would have liked to have seen a quarter inch headphone jack instead of the 3.5 millimeter one. On the other side, we have buttons for mute, surround mode, direct, display, zone selection, and the volume knob. Around back are seven HDMI 2.08 inputs with three HDMI outputs with one supporting ARC. There are six RCA inputs with four coax and two optical ins. There's also a pair of balanced XLR inputs. Here are some unbalanced RCA preouts as well as balanced XLR outputs for all 11 channels. Although if you're running two subwoofers, the second subwoofer is RCA only. Here we have more connections for triggers, an RS-232 in, FM antenna, USB in, and an Ethernet input. There's also a main power switch back here. I know, this isn't Audio Control's best processor. Their M9 costs something like nine grand, but from what I hear, this M5 sounds nearly identical. So it's gonna be a lot easier on the wallet. I'm not sure I mentioned it, but this does have IMAX enhanced support. So I am looking forward to giving this a listen. There's also direct room correction. So instead of having to spend hours adjusting PEQ like on the Rotel that was just here, it's all gonna be automatic. And if it sounds anything like the NAD M17 without any HDMI issues, then this may find a permanent home in my equipment rack. Well, all right guys, I am gonna keep this brief, but I will return with the full review in the coming weeks. If there's anything you guys are curious about, then let us know in the comments below. As always, if you found this video useful, then give it a like. It really does help out the channel if you hit that like button. You can follow us on social media, and if you wanna support the channel and help us keep these videos going, then stop by our Patreon page. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys again in the next one.